In today's video, I'm going to be talking about conjunctive cycles and the impact that these cycles have on people and places. This is for the OCR A-level geography spec, where we need to see how cyclical economic change, which leads to booms and recessions, impacts opportunities and inequalities in, for people and places. So I'm going to start with this idea that there is an economic theory that places go through periods of growth and decline that are roughly in 50-year cycles. Uh, an economist from Russia called Kondratiev came up with this, and so we call them Kondratiev waves or cycles. And his theory says that there will be a new technological innovation which will lead to growth in terms of the economy and opportunities in an area. But eventually, when this technology becomes a little bit outdated, we will see um, decline and recession in that area until uh, we will see a, another innovation comes about which leads to a new cycle of growth. So uh, the example I've put here is when the steam engine came along, that led to economic growth and new opportunities in certain areas, particularly in manufacturing. And that led for some places and people to have some great opportunities that eventually peaked and then there was a period of decline. So when we get this period of emergence up into a peak, we call these periods of boom. And then when we get the kind of innovation becoming a little bit outdated uh, or there's it's, it's reached saturation point, we start to see a decline from that, that peak and we call this the recession and decline period. So obviously, this changes in te te technology will in fact impact places uh, and, and the economy and therefore opportunities for people, which can affect inequality. One thing that's really important is that places aren't static. So as these places go through periods of success and decline, the opportunities of people and places will change. On the left, I've got a picture of a British steel worker who was working uh, in the 50s when British steel would have been a, a hugely important part of the economy. Uh, and so any places that are associated with that would have been very wealthy. There would have been lots of opportunities. But now um, many of these kind of steel manufacturing factories are in serious decline. And so the opportunities and these places will have been very adversely affected. And it really depends on how adaptable and resilient places are to these changes in the cycles. When it starts to decline, are they resilient enough to to move the innovations and in technology or are they kind of left behind? And I'm going to talk about that with a named example in the video. So the example I'm going to talk about is uh, D Detroit, which was famous for car manufacturing. Henry Ford, uh, who makes Ford cars, set up his factory there and this is an important uh, part in the, the fourth conjunctive cycle um, because this was the period of automobiles. And so anywhere that was making cars was seen as an area of innovation. This was the, the rise of the combustion engine. So that period from 1900 up into 1950s would have been the emergence of automobiles and the growth leading to a peak by about 1950s. And Detroit would have been right at the heart of that kind of growth and peak, uh, and it would affect the, the people living there. So in terms of the way it would have affected people living there, uh, employment would have been very high. There would have been very, very stable wages. Uh, there would have been lots of disposable income for people because they would have high employment levels, which would have had a, a knock on effect and led to multiplier effects for local services who could all grow. Uh, and because this became a hub of innovation where the best cars were being made in the in the world, it would have attracted investment from other areas, but also businesses and skilled people to move to that area. So the example I've given here is that because Ford had set up this incredible innovative uh, manufacturing hub in terms of cars, about 100 other uh, car manufacturers uh, moved to be there. Uh, companies like Buick um, and Chrysler would end up having their companies in Detroit because it was the center of the innovation at that time. This obviously led to changes for the place. So here is the Henry Ford Hospital. Because it was such a wealthy place, they could build large infrastructure projects like huge hospitals that would have helped the people because it was an area of growth and wealth. 
Similarly, here's an example of some of the buildings that were uh, in Detroit. It's a, an incredible mural, which would have been expensive to, uh, to, to build. Diego Rivera actually made that, who's the partner of Frida Kahlo. And the place on the right is Cadillac Place, which were these industrial buildings that show that it was an area of wealth and growth because lots of money has been put into the built environment here uh, during this boom period. So places like Detroit and similarly in the UK, which we'll talk about Birmingham later on, would have gone through a boom period during this 1900s, 1950s because they were important car manufacturing places, centres of innovation. However, because of a failure to adapt, resources being shifting, what made them unique not being important anymore, by the 70s and 80s, they went into recession. And this obviously had impacts for the people and places, especially in terms of inequality. As soon as the car manufacturing started to move uh, to places like Indonesia and China and Mexico, where it was cheaper to make it in terms of uh, the new international division of labour and global shift in manufacturing, what we start to see is the GDP of that area declines, those businesses close, we get bankruptcies. Eventually, we end up, as we can see here, industrial buildings are left completely derelict um, but also homes get left behind because people haven't got any jobs anymore and so they leave the area so the, the built environment the place goes into um, disrepair this is all because this is not a center of innovation anymore it's an area of decline because we've moved away into a, a new cycle in the conjunctive cycle and because Detroit wasn't was unable to really adapt, it got stuck behind and therefore became an area of recession and, and decline. This obviously affected people as well. Unemployment increases, people have less money. Because they have less money, those services shut. Households re retract their spending and try and um, just use it for essentials. Uh, we can see here that the people are in a food bank because they have got so little money that they're having to rely on um, volunteer support for the basic needs and anybody that is skilled um, normally, normally will migrate away. Detroit is just one example uh, and but this happened in lots of lots of places where there were big kind of manufacturing units um, so in the UK Glasgow, Sheffield, Birmingham all of those places would have experienced very similar uh, kind of effects in terms of inequalities. However what also makes the gap between places even wider is that when some areas are experiencing recession, other areas are experiencing a boom. So we can see Google here, which is in Silicon Valley. So while Detroit was really suffering from the loss of car manufacturing, places like Silicon Valley became the boom center for innovation for IT, right near um, San Francisco. So lots of educated people there who were starting to work in um, telecommunications and computers. And therefore, we see that becoming a real period of boom. And it's now becoming a, a period still where it's starting to peak. Um, and it could eventually go into a recession, maybe in the future, depending on what the next cycle is, while Detroit had, uh, had slumped into a, a, a period of decline. But as I said before, uh, places are not static. So they go through these periods of success and decline. And some places can be reborn. So Detroit is still a very poor area, still has many of the effects that it had from its kind of 1980s decline. But there is investment in what would be the, the latest cycle. So talking about quaternary industries, high tech research, the Detroit Center for Innovation is a, an attempt by local government to bring this area back um, into uh, the, the mainstay of the economy. But at the moment, this is a very small time effect and it still would be stuck in that period of decline that hangover from its 80s period.